We're in the paint booth, our base coat is on, and we're ready to get this little horse finished up. Let's get started. Well, welcome back here to the shop. My name is Brett and I'm glad you've tuned in. This series here, we've been working on a little rocking horse for the Keeland racetrack, the Keeland Mercantile down in Lexington, Kentucky. If you've been following along, then you kind of know where we are at. We are back in our paint booth. And like I said last week where we left off, uh, we pretty much got everything primered. And I said, when we get back this week, I'm going to go ahead and have the base coat on here. Now, when we back in the end of July, August, when I had talked to the Mercantile and we discussed what kind of horse they wanted in the color, they wanted to stick with more of the brown tones, um, maybe almost into a chestnut. So we're gonna stick with that. So we're gonna do a horse here with a lot of brown tones, a lot of black, and we're gonna darken this up. So what I did is instead of just going with the traditional, like a chocolate brown kind of a color, I want to stick along the lines of the chestnut and bring some of that red out. And one of the horses that I do paint, I call it a blood bay. And so the base coat that I spray is right off the shelf at Home Depot. It's called Rusty Gate. It has some nice oranges and some nice red tones in there. And when I paint a horse, and again, if you're interested in how I paint dapple grays and some horses, I kind of go through a lot of that. And again, I'll put a link up here in the description on you know, my painting style and techniques. But for this particular horse, and when I, when I go into painting a horse, like something like a chestnut, I kind of go through and I'll study pictures and you've heard me say that an awful lot. I'll go through Pinterest and, you know, I'll Google different horse pictures and things. And then if I find a picture that I really like and the colors, then what I do to start is I'll zero in on one of the lightest areas of that picture. And so if I want more red tones, then that's the color I go after. So even if the horse is brown and, and you don't think there's any, I'll look up into here and I try to find those real light um, tones and that's where I start and that's how I build the horse so by the time we're done with this this afternoon you're not going to see a whole lot this horse is going to look more brown it's going to look you know uh, lots of black in there but then you're going to be able to see some of this red just poke through and that's kind of the technique and that's how I approach when I paint a horse so what I'm going to do here is I, I put some sand color. Now the, the paints that I use, this is all Createx paint, nothing again, nothing special, nothing fancy. So these are just, you know, you can go to a hobby shop and get these, these colors that I'm using. So I'm gonna start with the sand. So I'm gonna go over and I'm just gonna lightly start misting some of this area with this real, real light brown color. And then from there, we're just gonna start introducing more colors the light browns the dark browns you know the blacks so and we're just going to continually go over this and just mist it and we're going to build layers on, on over over this horse and so the idea is when this horse is in a particular setting if there's sun coming through or it's kind of dusk you're going to see different parts of this paint you're actually going to see a little bit of depth you've heard me use that term a lot 
and it's accurate, you're going to see some depth to this and you're actually going to see through all of those layers and you'll get down and see this red again by the time we're done. So anyways, that's enough talking. Let's go ahead. Like I said, I've got my sand color, this really light brown, and I'm just going to start misting this color in here. I pulled my compressor out of my cabinet because it was just getting way too loud. Plus it was kind of getting hot in there. So I pulled it back up on top. So again, I apologize. It may get a little bit loud in here. But it's still, I love this little compressor that I bought. And I think it's really quiet. Of course, it's gonna pick up quite a bit because of my microphone here. Just, you know, I'm kind of thinking here, and the reason I'm going in with this real light color is I'm just trying to think of where the sun, if these high spots on this horse. So we've got a high spot here. We're going to have a high spot in here. So I'm going to start with some light area here, and we'll hit this a little bit harder and harder in here, and then we'll kind of, like I said, we'll go over it with a light brown next. If you're new to airbrushing, you thought about trying it, give it a shot. I'm no expert, believe me, and I don't claim to be any sort of a, an airbrushing expert. There are people out there, artists out there, that can do stuff with an airbrush that I can only dream about. The best I can do is just get in here and just kind of miss. But it is a lot of fun, and I really do enjoy it. I like my, my table here, too, that I made. This is just an old desk chair bottom base, and I just welded a pipe to it. And it's just a two by four up underneath here on a piece of particle board that swivels. And that's, that's my little setup here for these little guys. And you notice I'm just working around the piece. I'm not going heavy. standing back about 12 inches and I'm just misting this color on and in some areas that I want to go a little bit heavier I'll just kind of slow down and then go back in and blend it in Good. I'll clean my gun out here and I'll be right back. This is all water-based paint. So I'm just using water right now just to kind of clean it. Good. Now I've gone ahead and I've loaded up some light brown from the Createx company. Try to bring this over here. 
And again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go in and just start misting this color in. Now, the nice thing about this color, it's light brown, but it has an, another, it has a red tone to it. So we're gonna go ahead and just start spraying it lightly. You could always, and I usually always recommend this. And again, if you're new to airbrush, even if you uh, have a little bit of experience with it, I always like to start in an area that is gonna get covered, that I know is gonna get covered. So a perfect area to start is this saddle area back here. So we can go ahead and just start misting it. And I wanna watch and see how the gun, how the paint sprays. Get a feel for it. And then we can go through and just start misting our brown on. Again, I'm just gonna work around the piece. I'm gonna turn it. I'm just going to keep layering real lightly this brown. I'm sure the camera's not picking up. It's hard to do this, you know, while recording. Like I said, right now, I'm just layering. So even what I'm seeing here right now, and I'm, believe me, I'm right here doing it up close. You know, I'm not seeing a whole lot of change either, but that will eventually come as we continue to work around this piece. It'll just slowly get darker and darker. sure if you can all see the change yet or not. See how far back I'm standing too? I'm about 16, 18 inches now. I'm letting that fan really kind of spray out, kind of wide. Don't forget to get up underneath. Now we can kind of go in where we think there are going to be some shadow lines like around the shoulder. We can darken that a little bit. Darken in here. Underneath the jaw. Again, it's just one of those things where you just have to kind of get in and just do it. And the nice thing is it's paint. I still have this color, this base color in my gun out there. If something does happen, I can always come right back in and kind of dust it with the base coat, let it dry, come right back in and just pick up again. It's paint. I mean, so even if you don't like the direction it's going, you can always go back Fix it, repaint. I'm going to clean my gun out again.
nice thing too with this paint, this airbrush paint, is that it, it dries pretty quick. So every time I can kind of go through a cup of paint, then I can go clean it out and let this kind of dry a little bit. And then by the time I'm ready to go again, this is pretty well set. So it dries pretty fast. We shouldn't have any problem later on this afternoon to come in here and clear coat and go ahead and spray our clear coat. So we should have everything pretty well wrapped up today. And then we can start thinking about doing final assembly on this little guy. So I talked to the folks at Keelan Mercantile and they're really excited to get this guy. And I'm excited for them. This will be a lot of fun. Something different for me too. I mean, this is all brand new. Constantly working around this, this horse, just misting it on. And areas where I want that red to kind of really come through, like in this area, then I'm just going to go real light. I just pull back and stand back. Areas that I want to go a little bit heavier, I can kind of, you'll see me kind of come in, like up underneath the leg. I always want those a little bit heavier and I'm staying away from this because I want that a little bit brighter. The rump on a lot of these horses are always a little darker. Maybe what I'll do is take you off the tripod and after I finish up this this layer, this round of light brown, I'll bring you in a little closer so you can get a good look at it. Looking good. There we go. That's the last of it. Let me go ahead and clean the gun out. I'll take you off the tripod and then we can kind of walk around it again and I'll explain a little bit more and you can see a little bit more detail on what I'm doing here. Okay, so I took you off the tripod here so that you can get a better idea of how this is looking. And I kind of pushed it in further into the paint booth because I've got more light coming from the outside than I like to deal with. I try to paint on more overcast days. I think you get a truer light. I don't like bright sunny days. 
especially with this big window in here. So to give you an idea here too, where we started, here's a piece of cardboard. And this is what I sprayed, you know, I had sitting, the horse was sitting on top of. So let's see if we can kind of set this here and give you a kind of an example of where we started and how these brown colors, it's just starting to slowly tone, tone this all down. You know, and again, it's not much. We're just layering. I may go over it again with more light brown. You know, I can see some areas here that are kind of light, but that dark brown next, when we get into that, that's really going to cover a lot of that up. But again, that gives you a really, really good idea, I think, of, of how this horse and the browns. So once we get into this dark brown, then you're really going to see a real big change. And you're going to see these bright colors, this orange, really come through. Yeah, that's good. Let's go ahead and load up a little bit more light brown in the gun. And let's go over it one more time. So let's go on, let's, let's spray another coat. This is going to be our third layer of light brown. If I were working and this was going to be at the Blood Bay, what I call a Blood Bay, I would have stopped on this because I want more of that red to come through. But since we're kind of going more of a chestnut, with those brown tones. We'll continue on with the light brown color. We're now doing a fourth layer of the light brown. I thought maybe I could do three, but I think four. And we may even do a fifth. Just really trying to focus now, darkening this, this back area, this rump area.
I think four is good. I don't think I'm not seeing a whole lot more change. I think four layers on here of the light brown is good. Let's give that a minute to kind of set up and dry. Then we'll come back in. I'm going to mix up some um, dark brown and we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to go over the entire horse and just mist it. And then we'll go in in some areas here and just start to slowly darken again underneath the jaw, these shoulders, you know, these areas here where this joint is on the horse. We'll just continually just kind of darken different areas, but leave as many of these high spots alone as we can because we want to keep those. So when the sun hits it, you know, you'll really see that come through. So yeah, let's walk away from it for a few minutes. Let this set up. I'll clean my gun and then we'll come back in. We'll start in with the dark brown. And we're back. So I gave this about, I'd say 45 minutes to kind of dry and set up. And in, in the meantime, I just went ahead and took my camera and offloaded that video and went upstairs and started editing this video. Notice that there's banding, those lines coming down through slowly. It's irritating, I, I know, and there's not much I can do about it. So what I did is I set the camera back a little bit further, tried to get it out of the paint booth a little bit and zoomed in. So, you know, hopefully this works and it cuts down on that banding. That is so irritating. And what I'd like to do here in the future is get a, a better camera instead of the GoPro, even though that's a brand new GoPro. Those don't seem to work real well in um, areas like this with LED lighting. So again, I apologize, but hopefully this works a little bit better. Um, we're going to go with the dark brown now, and what I'll do is, again, I'm going to work this around just like we did with the light brown. Just mist it on, hit some areas, some shadow lines here, and we'll slow down and darken those a little bit more. Once I do that, then I'll take you off the tripod, and once again, we'll go around it, and I'll show you a little bit more up close uh, as to you know how it's looking and, and what I'm doing so you'll get a better a better idea of what I'm you know what I'm doing here it's real light Missing this darker brown on. I'm gonna stay away from these areas in here because again, that's some of my high spots. I want that to kind of really come through. The legs we can start to darken up. We're probably not going to put four coats of dark brown on here. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to say we're definitely going to do two. We may do three. I don't think we're going to need to do four. We'll see. that off.
I had a comment last week, I think it was from John, that thought, you know, cutting down on the music was a good idea. He was also interested in, you know, he says he'll go through different shops, different woodworking shops, and he likes to, you know, stop and pause the, the, uh, the video and then kind of look around and see what other, you know, woodworkers, artists are using. I do the same thing, you know, it's funny. And uh, one thing that he was interested in was my paint booth area, and I told him, you know, this week we're going to be in the paint booth again. Uh, my paint booth back here, this is a Devilbus paint booth, and it's one of those that you stand in front of, so it comes out to here, and I built this room around it. I don't know what the year is. I would say it's probably, if I had to guess, maybe early 70s, but the motor's up on top, so, you know, we don't have to worry about fumes and explosion or anything. So the motor's all up above this, and then there's a belt that drives the, the fan back here. It has a light. It burned out. I need to fix that. Um, but boy, I'll tell you, it works really, really good. We had to go to the other side of Pennsylvania, my brother and I, and we disassembled this. It was on the third or fourth floor of an old factory. And yeah, you know, we went up there and disassembled it and then brought it down through a freight elevator. It took a while. It was uh, you know, quite a work, quite a job to do it, but it was really worth it. But it works out really well having this room. This room is probably about, I'd say this paint booth is about eight foot wide. I think it's 16 feet long, so it handles and, and does everything that I need it to do. I did a lot of kitchen cabinets out of here. I hate to say. Concentrating a little bit more on these legs and darkening those up quite a bit. Kind of go in here a little bit, hit the nostrils, darken those. Maybe around the eye and the eyelid.
not spending too much time in one spot. Again, you can just see me constantly rotating it. And what I'm doing too, when I'm rotating it, I'm catching the sunlight and seeing how the sun kind of hits different areas. And then I can kind of tell, you know, I can kind of determine, do I want to tone that down? Do I want to leave that? How does that look? You know, I can tell like up in here and I'll bring it in, but you can still see that red coming through that orange. Maybe I'll want to darken these legs back here again. Go. I'd say that's good. I don't think we'll go over it anymore with the with the dark brown. I used about a cup and a half. So while I came back in from cleaning the lid, I put a little bit more, gave it another squirt of dark brown. So we used about a cup and a half. I'll take you off the tripod and bring you in here closer, and then we'll walk around it and you can take a look. Okay, now you can get a better idea here of how this is starting to shape up. Rotate it a little bit. See darkening this rump area back here. See how when you rotate it to that that orange comes through all of those different layers. That's what we want. And then when we go to clear coat this it's really going to bring out a lot of that. I'm not too concerned with this under here, uh, it's a lot lighter, but our blanket is going to come down. So you're not going to see a lot of this and it's going to come back to here. But that's, that's looking good. Next up, we're going to go with black. Black, we got to be very careful because we can really screw this up real quick. So again, we're just going to dust on some black. I really want to bring the legs out a little bit more and darken those with the black a little bit in the nostrils and the head. We're just going to hit some real light areas and then that's pretty much going to be it. We'll let it sit for the rest of the day and let it dry. Good. And here we go with our black. And again, I don't want to go crazy with this because you can really overdo it. So we're really just going to work on our hooves. We'll darken those and then feather it up light. We'll do the nostrils a little bit around the eye. I think I'm going to hand paint the black inside the ears. And we're just going to go over in just some different areas, but really the legs is all we're really going to concentrate on. And 
And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going in a little bit tight down here and then bringing my airbrush back and just feathering it up.
I'd say that looks pretty good. What do you all think? I think it looks pretty good. I think this is where I need to stop and walk away from it. Maybe go get some lunch, let this dry. And we'll see how it looks. But I'll get my gun cleaned out. I'll bring you off the tripod, take you off the tripod, bring you in here again. We'll walk around it and then, yeah, let's just walk away from it. There we go. Good. And when we get the blanket on too, what I want to do is I'm going to do like a dark green or a hunter green, almost like the silks, like on a thoroughbred. So, you know, that's, that's yet to come, but that green against this color is really going to just pop. Yeah, I, I love it. Looks good. Good. Yeah, let's walk away. Okay, now that I've taken you all off the tripod, we can spin this around here a little bit. And you can see, you know, how that orange still comes through really, really nice, especially in the sun. And again, when I go to clear coat this, this thing's really going to, really going to have depth. I, I use that word a lot, but it's, it's just, it's true. You're going to just really see down into this, into the paint colors. What I may do too, I'm, I might be getting a little bit ahead of myself and getting into a hurry where I'm talking about clear coating it. I think I'm going to let this set for the rest of the day. I've got other things again in the shop to do. I'm working on a couple of other horses. I'm going to let this just set and come back in later on this evening. Oh, around, you know, we'll say six o'clock and we'll take another look at this. I want to look at this again in some different light. And because uh, I do notice up under here, it might be a bit light. So I might be able to go back in with some dark brown. I'm certainly not going to go into any black. I'm done with the black because like I said, you could really, you could really screw this up really, really quick with black. So I'll be a lot safer with the dark brown and go back in and hit some more areas with some dark brown. But I love, love the, the head area. You see that in some sunlight. You can just see that burnt orange coming through. It's going to look stunning when we get the clear coat on this. Yeah, I really, I really think this is going to just be absolutely stunning when we're done. Good. Well, I'm going to go get some lunch and we'll come back in later this evening and take a look at this. And like I said, I think I'll go back in with some dark brown and hit a couple more areas. I think I'm going to need to do that. Just soften it a little bit more. But for the most part, I like it. Good. It's now about seven o'clock in the evening and now you can kind of see it in some really low light conditions. And again, I think it looks, I really, really like it. Uh, I think I'm just going to go in. I've got a little bit of dark brown in the gun and I'm just going to go over a few more areas here and just sort of soften some things that I see. You know, when you've got all that light coming in, it kind of washes a lot of things out. So in, in the evening like this, when the sun's down, then you can kind of get a better idea. At least I can get a better idea of, you know, some other areas that I may want to hit. Not too many though, but I thought I may go in and some of these areas that are, are, are brighter, maybe just soften those a little bit. I'd say for the most part, we pretty much have it. See, like right in here where it's a bit bright. Can even tone this down, even though the blanket's going over that. I'll put a little bit of 
black in the gun now and get some of these hooves a little bit a little bit more. Good. Just a little bit of black here and there, and then we're done. We'll, we'll let it sit overnight, and then tomorrow we'll just go ahead and get set up, and then we'll start, to, uh, you know, we'll start spraying the clear coat on. Good. I just have a little bit of black. I'm just going to hit some of these hoof areas. Like I can see in the hoof, just a little bit of brown coming through, and it's just because of the light that was coming through that window. It just washed it out. But now that the sun's down, I can really, I can really see that. I went up under here with my dark brown because it was kind of light under there. So I just hit it with some dark brown and, and up under here too, I could see some spots. For the most part though, I think, I think we're done. Let's just really, let's just walk away from it. As I say that, I keep spraying, but no, I'm serious. Let's just walk away from it now. Tomorrow's another day. Like I said, we'll get set up. We'll come in first thing. And I think I'll bring the rockers in. We'll clear coat those. Uh, those will get three coats. And then we'll set up and then we'll do this guy. Good. Well, we'll see you all tomorrow. Good morning. We are in the paint booth. That means we are ready to go with clear coat. We're going to clear coat not only our little thoroughbred horse that we just finished painting, but we're going to start with our rockers right now. The reason I like to start with the rockers, I've got the gun all set up with our uh, pre-catalyzed finish in there. It's a waterborne finish. I use Sherman Williams Ken Aqua Plus. Again, description in the description, there's all of the links and everything that I use. Uh, everything from sandpapers to you know my carving tools it's all in that description so if you're you know if you're curious so we're going to start with the bottom side of the rockers i like to do that because i like to test the gun make sure i have my pressure right the fan looks good you know that it's spraying correctly before i you know do the horse so we'll do the rockers first the underside i'm going to spray those with one coat we'll give them a quick sand after it dries this nice thing about pre-catalyzed finish uh, whether you're using an uh, a oil base or a solvent base finish or the waterborne like I'm using, it dries relatively quick. So in about 20 to 30 minutes, we'll be able to jump back in here and sand again. So we'll do the underside first, though. Give it a light sand with 120. We'll flip it over, and then we're going to do three coats. We're going to sand in between the coats. So yeah, everything's ready to go. Let's go ahead. I'll kick the fan on, and let's get everything clear coated today.
That's just a light coat on there. I didn't go heavy. And we'll let this set up for about 20 minutes to a half an hour. We'll come back in and check it, give it a light sand, flip it over, and then we're gonna do three coats. Third and final coat on our little rockers. Now I'm, I'm sanding down with, this is a, a, a well used 120 sanding pad. I'll use either these or I even have 220 sanding pads. Again, from Klingspore. And I'll just lightly sand everything and then we'll hit it again for the last time. And then we can bring our little thoroughbred in. Okay, here we go. Our rockers are finished. I took those out and set them on the bench out there to let those finish curing. We're ready to go with our little thoroughbred. And this is always where I kind of do one of these things because, you know, this could go really right or it could go really wrong. So I always do a little prayer before we, you know, get into this. So we'll get one coat on this little guy. And again, same, same procedure. We'll let it dry for about a half an hour, come back in with uh, you know, a, a worn 120 pad or a 220 sanding pad and we'll lightly sand it, hit it again. Here we go.
Okay, we'll let this set up. We'll come back in in about 30 minutes. We'll give it a good sand. So I forgot to hit record when I was doing the second coat, but I think you all get the idea. It looks good. I went a little bit heavy. Um, it's real tricky because you kind of got to know your limits. You want, when I spray this, I want to spray this so that it, it really looks nice and wet, but yet you can't go too far where you're going to create a run. So it's just a, it, it just lots and lots of practice to get it right to that, to that point where it's going to start to run, but yet it'll, it'll set up and stay. But it looks good. I mean, I'm right there on the cusp of it, you know, wanting to run. I had a couple of, we'll call them sags, right here from the first coat. But once this is completely cured, you'll never see anything there. So, yeah, I went a little bit heavy on the second coat, but it looks good. I'm going to give this about a half an hour. It's a little bit cool here in the paint booth, so I may even give it about 45 minutes, maybe even an hour. Flashpoint on this is really 20 to 30 minutes, but being that it's a little bit cool in here, I've never really had a problem. I may give it, you know, 45 minutes or so. I'll just keep checking it. But yeah, there we go. Two coats. One more coat to go, and we've got it. And we have one more coat to go, and I just need to lightly sand some of these areas. This is 220. This is a worn 220 sanding pad that I'm using. And I'm just trying to feel real light. If I can feel any sort of a bump or anything, I can work it down. Good. Okay, one more coat and we are done for the day. always get so nervous you know you put so much time into these especially this little guy that you just don't want anything to go wrong and third coat went down beautifully so that's it I'm going to clean my gun out and we're just going to walk away from it for the night and we'll come back in tomorrow we'll take a look at this believe it or not it's about 4 30 right now I started somewhere around 10 o'clock, I'd say. So this has taken pretty much all day to get the rockers done and to get this horse done. But we're done. So now we can start thinking about final assembly and then we get to see what this guy's gonna look like. We'll see you all tomorrow. Good morning. It's actually been a few days now since I sprayed the clear coat on our little thoroughbred horse. I've just left it in the paint booth to really cure and set up before we start final assembly. Are you ready to see the results? Come on, I'll show you. 
Here we go. There it is. Shining like a brand new penny. We have quite a bit of sun coming through today, so it's really going to show off and glisten. I went ahead and pulled the tape on this eye because I wanted to kind of see how it looked. But there it is. And here we go. We are ready to start final assembly. I think what I may do is just go ahead and put the camera on time lapse and you guys can sit back and watch me as I put this little guy together and get him ready to go to Kentucky at the end of the week. Here we go. Well, here it is. Let's grab the rockers and let's put them up on the rockers and take a look and see how he looks. Here are our rockers.
it's like a glove. There he is. Well, what do y'all think? Here's my first little doll size thoroughbred rocking horse. We're going to be taking this to Kentucky this weekend and give this to the folks at the Keelan Mercantile at the track. And we'll get an idea. We'll see, you know, what they think of it. I think they're going to love it. But again, I'd like to hear from all of you. There are some things that uh, I see, but I'm going to hold off on that. I'd really like you all to comment and tell me, you know, and let me know what you all think of it overall you know if you like this or what you don't like and like i said then I, after that i'll share with you all you know my thoughts on it and where we can take this you know when we do another one but overall i'm really really happy with it first one you know being the first one i'm really really happy with it well and that's going to pretty much wrap it up for this series i sure hope you've enjoyed watching me create this little thoroughbred rocking horse for the keelan mercantile down in lexington kentucky like i said we're going to be delivering it this weekend and if i can i'm going to shoot some video and we'll bring you along hopefully we'll get some fun reactions to this and we'll see what they think of it overall and again if you've enjoyed watching this series please think about subscribing and also hit the thumbs up and share button that would really help me out in the grand scheme of things you can also check me out on instagram and facebook and i also started a little bit of a tiktok page so i'm floating around on tiktok as well well once again thanks a lot for following along and we'll see you next week here at the shop happy carving take care